right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the close. Welcome to the last half an hour of trade before we go into the last session, which will be the Friday session. Of course, non-farm payrolls on Friday. Everyone needs to know before the market, 8.30 a.m. will be non-farm payrolls. This is it a fairly large event? Sure, but let's keep things in perspective. While it's highly... Whoa, we've got, a, we've got alarms here going off. One second. Let's get rid of that. Now, while it's a highly volatile event, we also know that it's also generally positive. If you went and had a look at the last 10 pretty much non-farm payrolls, I think nine out of those 10 have been positive after the end of the day. We must remember that being optimistic in the market does pay as long as we're not seeing the signs of total degradation. Now, let's think about where we've been so far this week. We've been coming down and look at this. <laughs> wow, look at that weekly 20 moving average, 4,500 on the futures here. Obviously, depending on which SPX you're looking at, you're going to get it within 20, 30 points. But 4,500, look, we detailed this quite a lot as being a put level throughout the week. It had a lot of puts on it, and it seems like a bounce has occurred. This is partially due to the nature of these markets and how they work when there's high, high volatility and a high VIX. And also just partially due to the fact that it hit a pretty key level. How's everyone going today? You feeling good? PK Subban says, is the correction over? It's a pretty big call. Calling a correction over straight away is, is very difficult. But what you would say is that it's hit a zone of incredible interest for Wall Street. When you hit a weekly 20, you're making a big deal. We know that's been a big bounce zone. And we're seeing the first signs of pretty good recovery here. Uh, so obviously, we've got a bottoming. We've had a retest throughout today's session. We came back down, retested it, created a little double bottom. We've gone that distance, and we've come back up to the previous supports, and they're acting as resistance right now. So nice move here on the US 500. Let's think about some of the roads to recovery that we have right now. One of them is going to be kind of breaching through these previous peaks. Let's have a look at a four-hour. Okay, four-hour 20 moving average might be something we look at. Uh, let's have a look at the one hour. No, three hour. Sure, the 50, I guess, has held it down. Very weird chart, though, to be using. Usually don't use the three hour very much. But I do like to bring through a few reasons for recovery. But we're at, look, we're closing at resistance. It makes sense. We're going to close around here. Why? Because this is exactly where Wall Street likes to leave it ahead of non-farm payrolls. It makes sense. We're at a key zone just before the payroll number. Then if they short it off, it all looks very technical. Previous support. And yeah, that's really, really the gist of it. Let's go to the daily here. Just bring it up. You'll notice it's right on that zone. What is that? 4586, so about that 4600 area. And we still don't have a clear direction, though we have hit the very important weekly and if we believe in optimism, if we believe in anything about Santa, if we believe in the change of trend into the January period and the fact that December, January tends to be optimistic and bullish, that's good. And let's have a look at the stories today. I want to I want to just refresh these stories here for a second. What have we got here? Let's have a look at that, some of our favorite words. Let's go this one. Okay. Okay. All right, we've got a few few stories there. We've got another one that we want to put in here. We want inflation. Oh, 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 there's a lot less inflation discussion today. I thought inflation was the biggest deal since sliced bread. Well, it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> um, I look, I honestly have no idea how inflation became the discussion. The stupid 10 year is not even moving. Look at the 10 year. If anything, this looks negative. So that is just an absolute lie by the market in my opinion it's not what it's worried about let's see what you guys think what are you worried about most in the markets right now give me your reasoning actually i want to know this a lot let's i'm not going to tell you anything you tell me what do you think is the most important thing about the market right now kunal says do you believe in elliott waves uh, i think for investment purposes they can be okay and give you confidence but in general I found them to be very difficult on smaller timeframes. And I know that people are saying, oh, well, this is the end of the wave and, and the beginning of new wave and all this stuff. Um, I don't use it personally, but that doesn't mean that you do need to discount it. I just think that it's very difficult to trade with it. Trade. Investment 
yeah, there are many principles behind that. That's my opinion only. I don't use it though, and you, you guys know that I don't. Do you think gold and silver will reverse into an uptrend shortly? That's a good guess. <laughs> we'll have a look at that soon. Market makers are evil. Fair enough. Thank you very much, 250 people that are joining us. Let's see where people think the biggest problem is. So let us know your fear of the market right now. I'll give you my number one fear, but not yet. I want to see what you guys have to say. Let's look at the US 100 into the close. The reason we're focusing so much on indices is because this really helps with your stock investment concepts as well. So if you're like looking at stocks and you're not paying attention to the indices, you're making a huge mistake during highly volatile times. Like highly volatile times, we want to be always focusing in on the indices, finding the key supports, finding the key resistances. And when we've done that, then we can really pay a lot more attention to finding when the, when the turn happens on the indices, it's generally happening on the stocks. Then you pick the ones that you have the biggest bias on. Now, a lot of people will be saying, oh, but Tom, what about their head and shoulders on the QQQ? And I think this is another case of we've got news coming out and look where it's come back up to, the neckline. So you've got the left shoulder, you've got the head, you've got the right shoulder. This is, of course, the NASDAQ or QQQ or whatever you want to look at. We're right at the point of resistance before NFP. This is where we expect to close. The rally is very normal. We've got a long leg doji here as well in the two hour. We get a breach above that after NFP and we end up coming back up. Well, this is a false signal. And this is the problem with taking short head and shoulders. You'll find that head and shoulders are great patterns in concept, but in the stock market, I do prefer them to be the inverse side. That is usually a much better side to be on. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Daniel, thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. So people say instability. People saying all sorts of things. GDP trend for next year. Do you think PayPal has hit the bottom yesterday? Um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Gaps to fill is my fear. Late 18 style Fed, taper tantrum. Okay. So my my biggest fear in the markets would, would usually be valuation still. Uh, that would be my my one. And I mean, that's just the real excuse in the back end for, for dumping certain sections of the markets. But I have seen a lot of consolidation on valuation in 2021. So what I mean by that is if you think about 2021, we started the year in Feb with everything being worth heaps of money. We had SPACs. We had madness going through hype stocks. And if you notice, a lot of these hype stocks have really dropped off and the valuations have become a little bit better. So if we scroll down here and we think, uh, which one which one would we like to go to? Roku, for example. Now, Roku has never been my jam. I've never liked this stock very much. And probably for valid reasons, it seems like now. But I thought this was really overpriced. And it was. And it's coming back, to, back down to a much more fairer price. I mean, the thing that's crazy about this stock is when you think about it, it's going back down to September 19 prices. So all of that mass gain, and I'm sure a few people unfortunately here have been burnt by this, 183% has been taken from the upside almost, and it's now dropped about 60% of its actual stock price from top to bottom. So it's pretty damn big, and you probably think it's going to come into support sometime soon, but... This just shows that is the market overpriced? Well, it's repricing a lot of stocks. I mean, look at Twilio. It's very similar. It's repricing this stock. It's repriced DKNG back down to 31 at this stage. It's repriced a whole bunch of stocks. And even some of the, the bigger stocks like the ANC and GME scenarios are starting to reprice down. So is the market insane? I don't tend to think it's insane. But it's certainly, it's certainly at, at some interesting zones. All right. What do we have here? What are you guys looking at? Uh, fair enough, burned. That's actually the real big things here. But we don't know. The Evergrande situation is very big. Yes, that is correct. But we hopefully have gone through that for now. We'll bring that back in a few years' time. Paul says, Tom, what do you think of the news like this from Market Watch? The NASDAQ and Dow are now trading in a way that was evident just before the internet bubble burst. I don't think so. 
No. Look, the, every one of these crashes and bubbles and all these things are different. But again, having a crash after a crash, is it like with either 12 to 18 month period, or in this case, two years, it might be, is actually rare. And, and I don't even know if it's happened. And, and that's something you need to think about. The other thing is we've got unparalleled stimulus and the internet bubble was insane. I mean, we're talking about valuations on stocks that literally were just websites with a picture on them. Pets.com. I mean, this this is a totally different scenario. We have real businesses here that are maybe overvalued, but they're better still than the ones that were in the dot-com bubble. That was a very interesting bubble, but it hasn't been unprecedented. If you look at the ASX 200, look at the Australian market before the GFC, it was iron ore and mining companies. Now, people want to look at Facebook. Facebook was down heavily in the previous sessions and it's come back down to a level of support. I don't know why that's there. So is it down the level of support? Yes. Is it long leg doji for the close? Yes. Could this be something you look at after Friday? Certainly. If you like Facebook, I mean, it's back down to these supports and realistically, you've got the potential of get through 315 and all of a sudden saying, okay, cool. I'm I'm keen on I'm keen on this from the perspective of just a long leg doji and a bullishness. It's not as much as I'd like to see. I'd like to see, of course, bigger turnarounds with patterns. But yeah, long leg doji into the close here on Facebook for whoever wanted that. Absolutely. We have here about 15, 16 minutes to the close. People said Thomas PayPal hit the bottom. Well, it's in the bottom of our green zone. The green zone was created a while ago. We do like that. I like the fact that it's rallying here. I hope it continues to rally for people that are in this or buying it around this price. And I actually did something with one of the mentor groups last night. I might as well bring it up. And I was discussing the idea of whether this thing is overpriced anymore. So here is a PS ratio often used in hyper stocks as a bit of a idea of where it's been over time. So this was back in 2019, back in 2018 and where it is currently. So you'll notice that the PDS ratio is actually well under 10. Now, it's been as high as 15, arguably maybe a bit overpriced over here historically. But is this price historically cheaply or historically normally? I would argue the answer is yes. Is this graph going up? The answer is yes. If the business continues to grow like this, will this maybe tip up? We don't know that. But certainly the price will go up in comparison to the ratio. So therefore, there is a good chance that it will turn around. And you've got to think about things logically like this. I mean, this is one of the ways I like to do things. Um, obviously, I go into it a little bit more depth. I don't necessarily talk too much about fundamentals. And can anyone guess why I don't talk about fundamentals? And it's not necessarily because fundamentals are bad. Anyone that's a fundamental analyst and a TA analyst out there, and remember, I do like fundamentals, but there is a caveat to fundamental discussion. There is basic numbers in fundamentals, and then there is true fundamentals. How long do you think it takes to do fundamentals on one stock? Chat, how long? Tell me now. Tell me how long it takes, guys. We'll answer this one while we wait for you guys to find out. Koa says, Tom, how do we treat a stock that has great fundamentals but awful from a TA perspective? KPLT. Let's have a look at this one. Catapult. Are we in some kind of zone <laughs> of <laughs> medieval zone with Catapult? Look, well, firstly, it's a SPAC, so we don't look at it. <laughs> no um, look the problem is either you're missing something in the fundamentals because the ta tends not to lie that much or you are finding deep value is it a story that you're following the numbers how did you come up with your fundamentals i would always reassess that do you have an x factor with this particular stock an x factor is something that is outside of the normal fundamentals for now Ultimately, you need fundamentals, but I don't like stories. Stories seem to be wound so much up in crypto, in penny stocks, in SPACs, where people think it's the next Google or the next Apple. 
And when they all think it's the next Apple and there's this great story, it reminds me of all these uh, electric car companies that were coming out over the last 12 months, 18 months. Everyone said, oh, this is the Tesla killer. Well, look where Tesla is and look where most of those other ones are. Speaking of that, I wonder where this is on support, but I, I don't, yeah, the chart itself doesn't look very good. How's that old NKLA, NKLA going? Oh, what a surprise. It's a giant, giant piece of trash. What a surprise, trash stock. You know, total trash, okay? But look, the story was so good. Oh, people told us here the fundamentals was fantastic and then it just absolutely obliterated them. It's not your fault, but just try to do your own fundamental analysis. Think about things logically. Fundamental analysis isn't easy. It takes a lot of time to get good at it and you've got to be able to get past this rhetoric or story that people give you. Think about space. You know I hate space. And I don't think it's time yet. I love space because I'm a bit of a nerd, but I also don't think it's time just yet to invest in it. And I've detailed that with the marijuana stuff, the 3D printing stuff, the lithium stuff, the AI investments years ago. They were all great ideas, but they weren't ready for that time. So price action is a key there. Now, here we go. People say it takes forever for the fundamentals. PK Subban says it takes 30 seconds. No, I think fundamentals take a lot longer than that. Long time, says Monica. Absolutely. An hour, a long time. Ian says a long bloody time. Absolutely. Five years <laughs> for Meryl. A few days. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. A day, every day, hour, 10 minutes, years, minutes. I think proper fundamentals you're looking at a long time. It takes multiple days to really start to understand a business and possibly weeks um, of hard work, okay? So possible weeks. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Just remember, you've got to put in the time to do it. So you can't do it across as many stocks as you can cover in something like TA. So guys, when we did the indices straight before, we kind of expect them to float around this price. So I think the close isn't going to be that interesting. The reason why we expect them all to float around this resistance is because this is the perfect zone for the non-farm payrolls, 8.30 a.m. Friday. When we look at the US 500, for anyone that's just joining us now, thank you very much for coming in. By the way, guys, almost 500 of you, smash that like button. If you can do it, that would be fantastic. Then look at this, okay? Look. Can we see the previous support becoming resistance? We have a problem, Houston, and we're waiting for the non-farm payrolls. That doesn't mean it's going to be negative tomorrow. It just means we're at a critical point. And you can tell that's the critical point. It's exactly where we expect to be. Let's have a look at this annoying thing here, which is, of course, gold. Look, the price action remains hard. I mean, it, it still remains bearish from the aspect of the price action. <laughs> You can't always look at the data or the seasonality and say, oh, I'm going to trade that way. We need the price action to come with it. Now, you may say, well, I don't want to short. Well, that's fine. You just don't short. You don't have to short just because the price action might be saying, okay, this is totally weak right now and it could be going down further. doesn't mean you have to short. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> you could just chill back and wait and say, oh, well, you know, I'm interested in here. All I'd be doing is just sending an alert above here for gold. And unless you're getting that alert, the fact is you probably don't care. And maybe you set an alert all the way down at the supports as well, maybe like a 1720. And if you get a 1720 alert, cool. But other than that, we just do not have a turnaround story. We have a hideous looking couple of days. You can see how hideous it is. It's clearly been a fight. There's been some fighting going on here. I could see it reverse magically, but at the same time, that's a guess. We don't know. The price action is hard. Okay. It's hard. It's bad. It looks bad. If I was looking at this and it was like a currency, I'd almost be going, why is it so many rejections and it hasn't already sold off? <laughs> that would be my, my, my actual question. So many rejections. You would have thought it already followed through. Almost scary in itself how, how obviously hard this looks which is why I might pull back and I might say, you know what? I don't, want, I don't want to look at this anymore. I just want to just set my alert and we'll come back to it. IWM did bounce a lot today. Now, for people that are crazy risk takers, obviously IWM 212 area was much better. Look at the volume coming in here. We still need to consider that while 
it obviously false broke to the upside. <coughs> the same concept still applies, which could be that this still is the best index from a percentage standpoint. This is how much money is potentially in here. So have a look at the one hour and see what's happened today. So it's it's bounced up. Now, yesterday, I also talked about the two hour and the two hour 20 being a very key zone. So we've got resistance, resistance, resistance. Will we get now? Bam, bam, bam. Oh, that would be fantastic. All right, that's what we need. We need some action through the 20, get lightning bolt. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want. Done my like, odd to see no more count on dislikes. Yeah, that's a YouTube thing. Don't, I didn't do it. It's a YouTube thing. I don't mind dislikes. I mean, it is what it is. Take, I think I can still see it. It's, it's the Care Bear stuff that YouTube does. Look, I think there are some things that YouTube does that are pretty good. That one, I'm not sure if it's going too far, but anyway, it is what it is. Durgesh says $2. Hey, Tom, can you please take a look at Baba? Sure. Is Baba dead yet? Or is it coming back alive? 122. Ooh. 122. Wow. So it's underneath 130. I can look at it, but I don't know what we're looking at anymore. I feel like the, the company is getting killed by the country. This country's government over time. Uh, I mean, you're talking about 2000. What is this? IPO. IPO first 14. 2014, guys. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, I don't know what you want me to look at really here on Barba. We don't have the turnaround story. And I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot barge pole. I've said that quite a lot. You need serious turnaround to get me excited about Barber. I know that, you know, someone here purchased it or something, but we've had some big insider sales since then. I just feel like it's one of those stocks that, well, this is a good example of not trying to catch the falling knife. Look, we had a crack at Barber. Where do we have a crack at it? Right here on that green candle. We had to go right here. And it failed us. And you know what? Since then, no touchy. It's been, it's been frankly terrible. Frankly, just shocking, crap, hard stock. And it's getting obliterated. And you can tell it's getting obliterated because when you look at some of its competitors, does that look that bad on chart? No. It's getting pressured out. And it may even get, who knows what's going to happen with this stock. And that's the big issue behind it. It looks cheap on paper on fundamentals, but there's that X factor and the X factor is very negative towards it. So look, is this a support zone? Sure. But you would have thought 130 was a support zone and it busted that straight away. Don't try to be predictive here. You've got to be reactive to the change and you can only be reactive when you get proper base support and it still hasn't shown us that. So we've got four minutes till the close. Again, we expect the markets to kind of float around this zone. Looks like they've dropped slightly here selling off a little bit before non-farms at the resistance. So here's the little resistance, sells off a little bit. Here's the little resistance. Looks like it's selling off a little bit here on the NAS. The NAS is weaker because the NASDAQ has the actual head and shoulders pattern on it. So that's why it's the worst index at the moment. And we do need to remember that we have the non-farms. Just for anyone coming in, non-farm payrolls, 8.30 a.m. Here it is. And then we should get some clearer direction on the markets. Just remember that, guys. PayPal, it's starting to base, but it's still holding around that area. So, Dogesh, I think the problem is we can't see the turnaround story on Barber. It's 2014 highs. It's a point of interest, but it isn't a turnaround. Danielle Polk, $5. Your talk on Barber is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, look, it, it's, it's very... It's very mean what's happening for people there, but it's also a bit of a story of this is what happens. And unfortunately, this is the type of thing that, that you need to be aware of. When the price action is getting obliterated, you don't just try to buy that knife unless you're an investor and you're going to hold it for a long time. An investor can buy the dip and then hold forever if you want to, okay? But a trader does not do that, guys. If you're wanting that instant two-week turnaround, Get this through everyone's mind. Everyone says buy the dip. 
The problem is when someone buys the dip and they buy Apple and then they think they're a trader because it goes up in in three months' time, they're not trading. That's not trading. That's like investing and then it's coming around because you're buying a quality stock. Trading more so is make is looking for momentum and trying to get in and out in a very short period of time based on some form of confirmation statistics that you can replicate over time, replicate. That's your trading system. Buying the dip is cool, don't get me wrong, but you're, you're more looking at investment there. Do you know what I mean, guys? It's a big difference. What is the time frame you would look for reversal on PayPal? Probably a daily based on how bad it's been. Unfortunately, daily might be where it's at. I would look at the overall story of the weekly into daily into four hour. But yeah, I would say daily may need to be the turnaround. You'll notice here something like a four hour 20 is also a pretty big deal, which it's coming up to. But this would be one of those ones you'd have to practice scaling on picking up. So if you if you said, oh, I'm going to take it over this close, then you better be warned to be careful of getting all of your order in too early. Because if you get your order in too early, it could turn into a barber for you. You don't want a barber. No Baba. I was lucky to get out of Baba early on the bounce. Fair enough, Trishan. That's good. Market's so strong today, I can smell the green. <laughs> That's good. I'm stuck with Baba. You may be for some while, Durgesh, unfortunately. A few people saying Baba to zero. Could get D, D's like listed you never know that's the problem there barber the dip that keeps on dipping yeah it does, certainly has dipped a lot here all right so the close coming into the ends we're kind of still going to hover around this resistance you'll notice it's sold off here the reason why on farm payrolls again we've got about 600 people here so thank you very much for joining us iwm has been an okay pickup tesla <coughs> bounced off that previous level of support so it's sold off into it and then it's bounced off this area, which is a pretty big deal. And that's good to see. US 10-year has risen, but not that much. VIX has dropped, which is consistent with most VIXs that are this high. But at this time, it's still above 20. So what does that mean? We need to be relatively fast and nimble in the markets right now. It's not really a great time to swing trade the markets. When the VIX is above 20, try not to swing trade, guys. And we've got TLT marginal breakout. It's not really broken. It's right at resistance still. So we're waiting for the non-farm payrolls here. This is all about the non-farm payrolls. Resistance on the 20-year coming into this zone. It's it's definitely what it's looking for. Uh, stocks of interest just before, or we've just closed the bell there, but let's have a look here. Is there anything that I'm like, wow, that's cool or anything? I guess PayPal is at an interesting support. Wow, look at TDOC. Oh, it's under 100 now. Ugh. It's like the Barber 2.0. Wow. Kathy Woods Fund. Let me have a look here. Where's that Arc G? Arc G must be getting smoked. Yeah. Arc K. Oh, no, no, no. And to think Tesla is up so much. Wow. It's pretty horrendous. Got to say, it's not, not the best, not the best year, not the best year. SPLK, coming all the way back down. That CEO thing really busted this down, didn't it? Hit all the stops by now, I'm sure, unless you're investing. CRM has bounced a little bit after its bad news announcement, which was the earnings. Earnings has not been good for it, but that's all right. And then we've got here the NVIDIA, which continues to be a relatively strong stock from a perspective of bouncing. It's bouncing around this area. NVIDIA could be one of those ones that reprices at some point. So just be careful there. It has had a history of having nice runs with big reprices, but at this stage still looks relatively good. Airbnb, nothing much. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. So we have to really make a lot of these decisions based on the index itself. Where's Snap now? Snap's still sitting around that support. John Deere. Still hovering around the same area. It's actually held up pretty well. And a few people asked me about TAN before. <clears throat> so we were really interested in TAN this week. We didn't quite see the turnaround story. So we had here Long Leg Doji, Bullish Hammer, 
no follow through. And that's what a trader looks for. They look for that exact follow through. You get this. If you went in and it failed on you, there's nothing you can do about it. You've made a good decision. And especially if you then follow through with that, with extra scaling as it presents. So TAN hasn't done that yet. Uh, I still think this is a fairly decent sector, which is obviously the solar sector. Is it on any level of support or anything? Uh, I would wait for it to turn around, turn its head back through, get back up, and then start to talk about, okay, cool, we can start bullying this thing. Because remember, it is down heavily from 2021 highs. So certainly there. Barack says, square crowd net PLTR is at support and about to reverse. Yeah, all of these are pretty close to supports or at supports. So you're talking about square. Squares right down in that one kind of 90 area. Really got belted the last couple of days. <clears throat> Need a turnaround story for it. Net Cloudflare. I'm not sure how much support this thing's in at this stage. It's kind of just in the middle of nowhere land for me. But certainly one that has come down quite a lot. CrowdStrike, this one here has also come down quite a lot. This actually hasn't done much for all of 2021 in terms of now the price. So if you like this cybersecurity area and you believe in a stock like this, though it is still highly priced, it could have some serious upside in it in the future. And what's another one that I was thinking of just then? Ah, forgot. <laughs> oh, I forgot what it was. That's okay. I always see the NVIDIA used cards on sale now. I guess 85% incoming at some point. What do you mean by 85%? Yeah, Tesla's still on a decent support. 1,000 is the really big support. Uh, Judy says CRWD question mark. Yeah, it's it's kind of not on anything key, I would think, other than just a psychological being the 200 price. The key key supports here are like down here. So if we think about daily, it's kind of just in the middle of nowhere land. Neo got destroyed. Let's have a look at Neo. I haven't checked that out for a while. It certainly did. Got underneath that trend line there. Bam, straight through. Negative 5.51% in the at the close. Wow. LCID. Surely that thing's taking it now. Getting hit up. This. I want predictions from the chat room while we go into the crypto market. Tell me what's going to happen to LCID, guys. All right, let me know, chat. Let me know your big brain comments here. Is this going to fall back down to here? Or is it going to go to new all-time highs? Let me know what you think. All right, LCID, you can see the chart here. I'll sk skip off it, but I would love to know your comments. Okay, let's have a look at the crypto markets. We'll look at Bitcoin to start off with here. Still consolidating in the middle of nowhere land. So, yeah, we have here an interesting left-hand side story. Bit of a long leg doji, long leg doji, rejection candle, rejection candle. You can see it's got indecision all over it for Bitcoin. 60K still remains the key buy kind of breakout zone. That's where we expect that real strength to come back into this market. And it seems to be hovering on this support. Now, just remember, change it to log. That'll give you better trend lines. It does work better for crypto markets. So if you use the log chart for the crypto markets, I would say it's going to be a lot better. Have a look at Ethereum. Ethereum coming back down to its previous breakout level. So we've got that resistance becoming support area. It's down 1.21. And it's bounced back up. And you know what? Wow, look at this. Let me just click over here for a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? ADA is up? My God. Look at it go. ADA. What a bad cat. 
it's moving through. It's like a little inverse head and shoulders. Look at that little beautiful thing breaking through our downward trend, creating a little inverse head and shoulders. Anyone that was looking at this over the last 24 hours has been happy with themselves. Little nice gain here. So is this the awakening of the ADA crowd? Have they finally come back in and saying, okay, we're ready to rock, guys? It's had some spurts in it before. It hasn't had sustained gains for a while. Let's have a look at the ADA F. The ADA F one, uh, one second. So I wonder what ADA BTC looks like. Okay. I like doing ADA F. That's the ratio. <clears throat> oh, not enough history. There we are. All right. So it's gone underneath the previous support. It's busted down. And there's bought the ratio right back. So we know where the ratio has been, point millions of zeros nine. It's been a lot higher. So the ratio has been higher. What do you guys think about ADA here? Weekly. Weekly would be a cool story. Weekly 50. Hmm. Can we see it continuing to go here? We have major resistances at kind of where it just stopped. And the next price is 190. So let's bring down this for a second. So these are the two problem zones. So we breach this. We should be moving towards 192. We breach 192. More ticks. Much, much better. Darren Jones, $10. Tom, I bought 100 shares of IWM at 216 and sold a 213 call on them expiring tomorrow for $4.88. Premium. My profit is $115. Is this strategy called anything? Well, you've done a covered call, but you've covered call <laughs> underneath the price of the strike. So it's a covered call. Uh, you've obviously covered it with one position. 488. Wow. So it's pretty good premium there. Uh, but it's not really, well, I mean, I would just call it a covered call strategy and you've just sold underneath the strike which is means that if, where are we? 219 on it, on IWM. So you need this thing to sell off tomorrow and you need it. Well, obviously you just want it under the, you're not going to get 213 again, but if you want to rebuy it, you kind of want like a 250. Uh, oh yeah, profits 115. Yeah. So it's just a covered call. Sorry, your profits. I thought you said like it was 215 was your strike. Okay. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's just a covered call, man. And that's because of the increased volatility. You've been able to kind of produce a profit from that action. So even though it's dropped further and when it's come back up, you've got the cover on it. Obviously the cover has helped you get back that premium or get back that price that you bought it at because you bought it over here. It's bought your average slightly above. And then in the future, what you're really looking for is, I mean, you could do this all the time. Covered call is actually one of the best strategies out there, but the problem is you need big money. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is covered calls are made for rich people. Really, really, really big positions. If you have a stock like, I don't know, let's call it Apple or something, and you wanted to cover that position. So you said, okay, I'm prepared to take the market risk. I think the stock's going up over time, but I want to guarantee my locked in profit. You could sell a cover on that position and potentially bring for six months to seven months, you could bring in even upwards of 10% during high volatility. So you could get a guarantee because you remember you lock that profit in and it comes into you. It's credit. You can get like a guarantee on that, which can be massive. And then the, the premium you've bought in is quite large. Obviously, quite a few percent for just a few days. Let's see what people think about. Hmm. Cardano finally coming back to life. Yeah. <clears throat> LCID is another overpriced car for rich people. 
Mm -hmm. So most people said down, fall hard on LCID. You guys know. Yeah, that's that's some nasty stuff on LCID. Be careful there, guys. It has that topping kind of look on it. Check out oil. Okay, we'll do that. So ADA is looking a lot better, but we can see it's hit the resistance. If you've got a little trade here, well done. Looks like it's coming back to life. Be interesting to see how it trades through and whether it gets past that point. That could be an interesting day trade or scalp for some people to be looking at. So the crypto market in general has been okay for now. It's just kind of holding around, waiting again, I believe, on non-farms. I think a lot of the market is. We can see it in the bonds. We can see it in the VIX. We can see it in everything else. Let's have a look at US oil. So US oil, is the OPEC thing over? Have they had their chat? I guess they have because it pushed lower. So it pushed lower and then it's fully rebounded back up to where we were now. Looks like a bullish hammer here on the daily. I'll cover this in the video very, very soon. But yeah, that looks all right. Starting to starting to get a bit of a turnaround story. So we've got a nice little bullish hammer here that's about to close. We need follow through momentum. We look at the four hour and we start to say, okay, well, where is our recovery? What is our plan here? Do we have a moving average on the way down that we've respected? So I would definitely say we've respected that four hour 50. That's pretty far away. Would we like to breach this first? Yes. This is one of those ones that you would practice scaling on should you like it down in these areas. But this is our green zone. We like it down here <clears throat> for a whole bunch of different reasons. And now we're looking for the turnaround story. Okay, so two hour 20 almost held it through this. Hmm. I feel like it'd be nice to get above this zone personally, but like, like that, maybe take it as a portion, look for this, then look for that four hour 50 or whatever it was, four hour 20. Then yeah, keep going. Bullish hammer is good on the daily. That's very nice. We want momentum follow through. Again, non-farm payrolls will slap it around a bit. Nick Nasty says, dude, inflation is killing me personally. If I wasn't in the market, I would be hemorrhaging money. What do you what 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 part of inflation is killing you? Are you talking about like food? Are you talking about some kind of car thing. What 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 is it, man? Cost of goods, shipping. What what are we talking about here? Be interested to hear hear your thoughts on it. DocuSign is taking a dive. Uh, the company. Actually, I do not have any DocuSign. Though that being said, I was wrong. I didn't think it would get to three hundred dollars. I hated on it back down here <laughs> and I ended up picking up square instead. And it did, it did certainly come through. Oh, oh, I see the post. Oh no, no, no. Oh, I didn't see that yet. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it is hemorrhaging, but straight into the, the support. In fact, is this the bottom of the range? Wow. The market is slapped it straight back into the 183 here. Oh my goodness. Ouch. Look at that. 22% taken off. Hmm. Not good. Yeah, docu plummeted post earnings. Yes, it, it it certainly has, and it's even it's even underneath the previous supports almost. Like I mean, this you're talking about absolute lows of 2021. Remember, this was July. Almost every one of these pandemic stocks is getting just destroyed. All these ones that came up, other than the big guys, the apples and stuff. All these ones that came up and they had that mass run on them through the pandemic. And I tell you what, you know, I know post earnings, this looks pretty bad. And maybe you don't like DocuSign, but there would be some out there now that you could go and have a look at. And you could say, you know what? I actually think this is relatively cheap. 
this is where the market is punishing these stocks. It's punishing the Kathy Wood types of investments. And if you believe they've got that long-term potential, you never know. There could be some value in these. Not not necessarily this one. I mean, I, I, I personally think the moat of this stock is not that high, but that's just me. Just bought Docu, says JD Walker. Good luck, sir. Will TDoc recover long term if we get a turnaround? <laughs> Docu <you> dung. <laughs> Tom, have you had a look at Amazon yet? Uh, not really. It didn't do much today, so I didn't really pay much attention to it. I'm just floating around doing nothing, which kind of sucks. All the Fang stocks really were, except for Google. Yeah. Just whatever. We just have to come back and hope that we get that nice. We want we want some kind of nice signal, but we're not getting any signal. We're getting boring trade. I still have it to the long side. I'm just not seeing anything yet that makes me excited. I mean, here we are and we're stuck within all of our moving averages and our trend lines and everything. We've got this thing trapped within an inch of its life, but it hasn't done anything yet. Barack says, docu another frothy post-pandemic stock like ZM. How is our good friend ZM going? <laughs> uh, no moat. No moat, guys. Crappy moat. That's why you don't buy crappy moat stocks. Investment number one principle. Big moat. If you have big moat, I love that stock. In many ways, Tesla actually does have a big moat because Tesla have all of their tracked car data, many other things, battery tech ahead of everybody else. This made more sense to me than companies like this, which can be obliterated. I could start my own Zoom in like a week. I'm not saying it's going to be as good as Zoom. Of course not. But you get the idea, yeah? It's not necessarily unique. NVIDIA has big moat. That's why it's a good stock. <laughs> Michael's such a hater. Oh, man. Do I... TDoc has no moat either. Yeah, TDoc has a relatively small moat as well. It, it, the Those kind of companies like Zoom and TDoc and stuff, they require that they get involved and somehow lock in their customers. And that is a that is a very big consideration. You are correct. Sometimes you can have the best product though. Sometimes you can have the best product and clearly be ahead of everybody else. And then it's all about getting user base. I mean, when, when things like Twitter and Facebook and stuff started, the moat to actually create the company is very small or to create the website. And then it just becomes a fight for the user base. And if the user base starts to decline and they're not running exponentially, then that's your risk. You need to have exponential increase. Zoom team viewer all eaten by Microsoft. Agreed. I use Microsoft way more than that. Microsoft just, they just keep getting them. What other comments we got here coming in? <laughs> Quite a few. Nvidia is up nine dollars from yesterday. Three fourteen up six. Yes, it's pretty good. Crab Apple McNasty at FX Evolution. Hey Tom, have you ever looked at ET? You mean like the movie? The chart is obviously sick at the moment, but in a market with inflated values, this seems like an exceptionally cheap price. Everyone loves a comeback story, do we? I don't even know if I like the film. The film kind of creeped me out. Was anyone else creeped out by E.T. more than they liked E.T.? Who likes E.T.? You like the film or you find it creepy? Tell me. It's like friend and he's got his hand out. Oh, no, 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 no. I remember one of my mates was actually terrified of E.T. I bought him a poster of it. He, he did not like that. He did not like that. $8.28. Here we go. Oh, that film. Um, here we are at this price. Look, I'm not sure if 
what this is oil and gas pipelines okay not really too interested in it i mean you have the support you would have hoped that howled it didn't which kind of sucks i don't think it's necessarily cheap or expensive if you're looking at it on a graph because of where it's been in the past i wouldn't do that so much this would have this would have been like a typical oil company they all would have come under massive financial stress here that it's rebounded you can see it never got back to the peak and then come back down will you potentially make money in this stock maybe i mean especially if oil continues its way but it it doesn't look great just yet on a chart you need to see it get back above this support Roxanne says love et and then some people say it's creepy and then isaac says creep me out the scene with the in the closet where he puts on the wig ruined summer of my childhood <laughs> yeah i feel like et is a bit polarizing some people say classic et was one of those i'm glad i watched it once films <laughs> yeah people like see look 50 50 here 50 50 <laughs> et was fugly scary Never heard ET called creepy lol. It is, it's creep. I'm telling you, it's a little creepy, guys. A little creepy. All right. So, what do we need to be watching out for? We've got non farm payrolls. Hopefully, it gives us some direction. What do we need to remember? Non farm payrolls always has the same trap in it, guys. It likes doing this. Or it goes in one direction and then fully reverses. So remember, the first couple of minutes here in non-fund payrolls, unless it's a very clear number, will often go the opposite way. Be careful with the scalping component. I won't be live streaming it, unfortunately. I will make a video right now talking about it. But in general, this is a good day for the markets. I mean, obviously, the US 500s come right back up, which is fantastic. The QQQ has done what you expect, which is a bit weaker due to the fundamentals. And when we have a look at the price action, don't be surprised where we closed. Don't even be surprised that we rallied. We basically hit that weekly 20. We hit the 4,500. So for anyone that was looking to buy, I mean, yeah, it was a decent area. We're going to remain optimistic in these markets unless we're told not to by the price action. And then we're going to be running for the hills a little bit. And we'll, we'll come back later. But at this stage, we're still optimistic. I hope the numbers can do whatever. I don't even know what's good or bad for these numbers and this is the problem no one probably does they're talking crap if they think they do because if you're looking at this number and you say okay we want it to be 528 or 600 or something like that the market's going to do what the market's going to do we don't know what it's going to do yet because unless this is drastically different i mean if it came out at a negative 100k well of course that's not a good number but if it's just sitting around the number 600 it's just going to do or 400 it's just going to do what it feels like anyway they'll push it in the direction they wanted to this gives them free reign to be like okay cool we're going to do what we feel like we just need to be kind of jumping on board the wall street train made room today for non-farms for it to go back and test the lows that's right certainly is a very big possibility it also can just break through that resistance and then keep on going the remake of et has to include elon musk yeah <laughs> uh, i'm sure someone probably gave me a dislike about the et but that's okay <laughs> all right monica says thanks tom stayed calm with your help this week yeah we need to always try to stay calm when we're seeing the similar things look when we can start freaking out maybe you get underneath the weekly 20 you close underneath that that hasn't happened yet for a long time and then we start talking okay well let's get into correction mode and I, look 2022 don't get me wrong there's going to be one of those times and it's going to be probably pretty brutal and there'll be that 10 to 15 percent correction now i don't believe we will go into a crash for many years i've spoken about this i think the crash is quite i'll still put it in the comments don't worry about that i'll still be like is this a crash <laughs> you gotta do it you gotta <laughs> that's unfortunately youtube for you but we will be talking about it and we'll always try to keep an open mind towards optimism because i think if you freak everybody out the problem with that is it you know 
it's not necessarily the best course of action longer term. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in a video very soon. I'll be popping it out very soon and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Tom is a raging bull. <clears throat> not necessarily a raging bull. I just learned that having a kind of optimistic time frame is a big thing. You know, I do in the mentoring groups, I get them all to do psychology tests. And really what you kind of do is there's the scale of here and here, and you want to be here. You don't want to be really anything. More of a realist, I guess. That would be where you want to be. All right, catch everyone. Bye. Is this the crash? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See ya.